we want to maintain a value of 0 until frame 24 and then immediately jump to the new squash factor value. We don't want interpolation. The other thing we don't want is to add another keyframe here, let's say at frame 23. You might be tempted to do this, is to add another keyframe at frame 23 to try to level out the value of the squash factor between frames 1 and 24. But in fact, you don't want to add another keyframe for a lot of reasons. One being that we're going to end up changing the global timing of our scene. So again, my advice is you're not creating a keyframe at frame 23. You're just going to change the interpolation of the keyframe at frame 1. So we're going to go and select the squash handle. And back in our graph editor, we're going to adjust the squash factor curve. So you'll see here, squash factor is listed a couple of times. And in fact, it doesn't matter which one you select here because they are in fact all the same. So I can just select any one of these and press the F key to frame the curve. So this is showing us the amount of squash over time. And here's our oscillation that we made. What we want to do here is we want to maintain this curve should be level all through the period from frame 1 to frame 24 and then suddenly jump to the value at the point of impact. So to do that, I'll select that first keyframe. And up here at the top, we've got different tangent types. So these are all different methods for interpolating between keyframes. But in fact, we don't want any interpolation. And so the option we want to choose on this toolbar is step tangents. So some programs call this a hold key. What it means is just hold this value until you reach the next keyframe and then suddenly jump to that value. So we'll click step tangents. And now we've got exactly what we want. And in fact, we can move this keyframe around and we can scale our curve and whatever we want. And we'll never have any problems that might arise if we had added a keyframe at frame 23. So I'll minimize, rewind, and play back in the camera viewport. And there you go, I've got my squash and stretch. So at this point, my animation is almost finished. All I need to do now is change the global timing, and then we'll be ready for lighting and rendering. So I'm in a good place here now to save. So I'll go back to my file, save scene as, we're up to ball version 6. So I could scale time in the graph editor. It's just not really convenient to do that. There's a better way to do it, which is from a different animation editor, which is called the dope sheet. So I'm going to close my graph editor. And I'll go back into Window, Animation Editors, Dope Sheet. The dope sheet gets its name from traditional animation. And basically, the dope sheet is an expanded version of the timeline. And it works like a spreadsheet. And in traditional animation, it's also known as an exposure sheet or an X sheet. Okay, so this is basically showing time running left to right. But instead of showing values, we're not seeing values like we did in the graph editor. All we're seeing here are keyframes as little boxes. So you might need to zoom in and out with the mouse wheel or Alt and right mouse to zoom in and out. You can enclose all the keyframes. You'll only see keyframes for the selected object. So if I select the ball, I'll see its keyframes. If I select the handle, and I, I might have to dig down into the handles channels, but there you go, I've got my handles squash factor. Now the dope sheet is a little bit hard to read at first because it's a little bit misleading. When you select an object and open up its hierarchy here, you'll see various things. For example, this is the transform node of the ball and you'll see translate, rotate, and so on. And if we continue to open this up, we'll see individual channels. The thing you need to know about the dope sheet is that the only real channels here are the ones shown in italics. 
So translate X is an actual channel. Translate Y is an actual channel. But this category here that says translate is not actually a channel at all. It's just a container for channels. When you select a keyframe in the dope sheet, the highlighting displays not just the selected keyframe, but also that keyframe's categories like translate. So this takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer with Alt and right mouse button, and I can position with Alt and middle mouse button to show you that if I click translate Y, click a keyframe there, I'm getting things highlighting here in the translate channel and in the balls transform node channel. So that just means that I've selected something inside of one of these categories. So these are sometimes called fake keys because that's not actually a key. It's just a way for you to select hierarchically. So for example, if I click on translate, I can select all the translate keys, but not the rotate keys. I can click on the rotate keys, but not the translate keys. Okay, so that's basically how the dope sheet works. And just like in the graph editor, I can select a key, such as this rotate Z key, and I can see its value and its time. I can go to translate Y, click on that key, and I can see the statistics. But what I want to do here in this case is I want to scale time globally for all objects in the scene. The way to do that is to go up to the dope sheet menu and go to the view menu and enable an option called scene summary. Scene summary, now enabled, shows all of the keyframes for all of the objects in the scene up here at the top. Regardless of whether they're selected or not, I could click off of this and now I've got nothing selected, but I'm still seeing keyframes for the scene summary. I can use the Alt middle mouse button to frame, and now I'm looking at all the keyframes from frame 1 to 48. I want to scale these down because I want to make this overall motion faster. So I'm going to select all those keys, just select all of them, draw a big box around them. Next, I'm going to activate the Scale tool. And I can just press the R key on my keyboard to do that. And now I see something a little bit different. I see a box enclosing the selected keys. So this is my Scale tool. It looks a little bit different in the Dope Sheet. But it works similarly to the Graph Editor in that I'm going to use the Middle Mouse button once again. So I'm going to click with the Middle Mouse button here on the last key at frame 48 middle mouse, click and drag, and you'll see I'm scaling all the keys in time. And again, I'm scaling all the keys in the entire world. So I'm going to bring this over to about 30 and release the mouse button. Now I'm going to minimize my dope sheet and play it back in my camera view and see the difference. So it's much better now. But we do need to look very closely at what we've done. So I'm going to press stop and I'm going to go to the front view and get in very close and scrub across the timeline and you'll see here on frame 15 hmm, interesting the ball's not squashing as it touches the ground hmm okay well there's something going on here and what it is is that Maya's priority in scaling keys in the dope sheet is to maintain a proportional relationship among all the keys what that means is individual keys are not going to necessarily land on whole number frames. So that's the big bugaboo around this. If I select a key, any key, and look at its statistics, look at this. The keyframe is at a time index of 15.22. This one here is at 17.6 something. So all the keys have landed on fractional frame numbers.